evening, everyone, and mm -hmm. welcome to another presentation on the Love at Home series. So we're so glad to welcome you into our home. We hope that you've been tuning in to all of the previous ones. What did we talk about yesterday? Can you I remind us? I wonder if anyone can remember. Mm. I think it was... Honey Bunny. Honey Bunny, where's the money? Where is the money? And that's a very important topic. You know, a lot of disputes are about money. That's correct. Share everything. But the Bible lays out some principles of how we can prosper in terms of money. And the first one is, what does the Bible say in Malachi? Return a faithful... Tithe unto tithe the Lord. and offering unto the Lord. And what will he do for us? He will bless us abundantly. And he will open the... Windows and storehouse of heaven itself. And pour us out a blessing. That we cannot even receive. Amen. Amen to that. So, Steve, what are we going to study tonight? Tell me now. I think you... I'll give you this one. Tonight we are going to learn six things every couple married should know about sex. I cannot wait to hear what pastor's got to say about this one. We can all learn a little something or two. So let's sit back and let's listen as pastor introduces this very, very important subject which God has given to us to partake at our leisure. Please, this is too good not to share with others. Please remind your friends, your relatives, your co-workers to tune in so that they can also learn and have a happy, healthy home life. Amen to that. God bless you as we learn together. God bless. Let us pray. Dear kind and loving Father, we come before you at this time to remember all our families, dear Lord, while we're going through this series of session for the family we want to bring all our church family before you but especially our families who are working day to day caring for those who are not well going to do their home visit in the hospitals remember them their father at time it can be so distressing for them they're caring for others and care have to care for themselves and worrying about taking home the illness to their family so be with them at this time dear lord help them to know that as a family we do care for them and then remember the families who are caring for their loved one at home dear lord continue to give them the strength to go through each day help them to know that as a church family we care for them as the song said when one have a heartache we all share the pain but we also rejoice when there's victory to rejoice so thank you for the ones who have healed their lord and are continue to serve you help us that as a church family that we will look out for others look to the ones that we can help see how we can help them let them know that you are there for them and that you'll never leave them or forsake them remember those who are living away from their family as well and they're not able to visit us they would like to some have lost loved one in different countries and they're not able to go and to spend the time with their families that are there so give them the strength to continue to go through help them to know that you'll never leave them or forsake them and that whatever happened you're always there so continue to be with us as a church family while we're going through this series help us to reach out to each other to let others know that we care about them Continue to bless them. Continue to be with us as a family. And dear Lord, help that when you come, each of us with our family will find a place in your kingdom. I pray in your name. Amen. Hearts 
the silent cry only Jesus hears people need the Lord people need the Lord at the end of broken dreams he's the Good evening, good evening and greetings everyone. We are live yet again. We are live at the Love at Home Back Chat. And yes, we have some special guests with us again this evening. And we'll be reviewing the topic that was shared last night. And a lot of people have commented about the topic. The topic was, honey, bunny, where is, where the, is money? the money? <laughs> money. And we, we particularly like the way that pastor pronounced, pronounced that money. We all know that money, well, the love of money is the root of all evil, but we know that money is a very necessary, very necessary commodity. So I'm going to introduce the panel. We have Brother Kwabena Kimathi, who's been with us before. We have Brother... Back again. We have Brother Roger Guthrie, who is a newcomer. And interestingly, we have an even newer comer, who is uh, Christine Hollington, who is stuck at home in Zimbabwe because of the lockdown and she's been there since November so she's really happy to see us and we're really happy to see her. Christine welcome. Thank you, thank you. All right Christine is stuck in Zim and I see you <laughs> sporting some of that national costume which even gives it a little bit more. The we authenticity. just call it clothes out here. 
It's just clothes. <laughs> They're not called national outfits. It's just, just clothing. Clothes. <laughs> just clothing. <All> right. <laughs> Excellent. Good to see you. Good to see you. So we're going to get straight into our questions. First one, I'm going to throw it out generally and I'll see who's brave enough to answer it. Honey Bunny, where is the money? So Pastor made reference to... Um, Pastor made reference to a number of plans. I think there were four plans that he made reference to as to how people can deal with money in the home. And I'd like, I'd just like to add that for today's discussion, we're not only talking about money between husband and wife spouse, because we, we appreciate that there are some families where there might be a missing parent. So it could be child with child living with child, so siblings living together. It could be a, a single parent living with a working child. There's a number of various scenarios. So we're gonna hopefully speak towards those this evening. So the question was, Someone give me some takeaways from Pastor's message last night, please. Um, may I may I get in here um, at this Thank point? You. I think um, after listening to Pastor's message, um, uh, the, these some of these points ran true with me um, in my my experience. Um, so I can definitely say that um, the second option, which was the two bosses um, within a relationship um, taking care of their own purse and um, looking after what is regarded as their own um, is probably uh, a disaster street. I can, I, can, I can verify that because what tends to happen is you, you plan for yourself. So as you plan for yourself, you are not including who is meant to be your partner or your wife. Um, so what happens with that is you are going to become disjointed within the relationship. Mm. And then things like accusations, things like um, verbal abuse, and you know all sorts of things can happen from there from there you know you'd be surprised at how um a decent conversation can switch at the mention of money <laughs> so um all right so yeah. so th thanks for speaking so candidly roger and yeah. i'd just like to just like to clarify that roger's con confirmed that he's experienced that in previous relationships but he's he's moving up the ladder and he's He's experiencing a different way of handling things now, but he was just talking about you know previous experiences where two breadwinners are only looking after their own interests, and in yeah. that kind of situation, you can have a situation where, for example, any children that might be involved they miss out. Yeah. Would anyone else like to add anything to what Roger just shared there? Yeah, I, you know, I'll, I'll I'll say that um, I think it's it's definitely. It's, it's a position that I think culturally in, in today's kind of um, do for self kind of kind of era uh, and everything, it's, it's, it's something that is quite common. And um, if you consider the, I know Pastor spoke about in previous um, presentations where he spoke about like the rates of divorce and, and, and stuff like this, it, you, you can see the, the parallel um, how you know how that actually correlates to to that um, that divorce rate and so forth, but also indeed for for children coming up looking at those kind of um, relationships as as well. Um, I think I've I've come up you know um, when I was much smaller in in a in a home where you know that there was these kind of disputes around finances and and, and so forth as well, and. Um, and uh, and that marriage didn't 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 continue um, uh, very uh, very long either, and um, so you know this is this is a real you know uh, topic that I think even as, as Christians we need to be aware of and and have a, a much better understanding of. I won't say that I've got it completely sewn up myself, um, but it definitely you know coming coming to be a Christian and even understanding the principle of I think you know the, the pastor mentioned about putting God first. You know, and um, you know, uh, yeah, you know, if 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 we're talking about working out, 
you know, your finances, ultimately, you know, you have no finances without God. So, you know, mm. putting God first, um, I think is, is I've found to be absolutely key at a time where I didn't, I, you know, there was a time where I didn't know anything about, you know, um, giving back anything to, to, to the Lord. So, you know, understanding that principle of, of tithing first, you know, uh, laying aside a, a, a free will offering, uh, however much that is that you decide for it to be, and then working out, okay, you know, what do I need to budget for now? How do I, how, how, what, am I what are my outgoings here? What are my essential outgoings? And uh, what, what are the things that would be kind of, yeah, that, that would be really nice, but, um, but it's not necessarily something that I need, need, need right now, you know? So, um, and, and, and then obviously, you know, savings depending on your, on your situation. So that's just what I would add. Okay, excellent. So one of the one of the reasons that we've involved Christine is not only the fact that she's a young person and we're trying to appeal to the young people, but also the fact that she, and I'll, I'll let you into a secret, uh, viewers, Christine, she's going to blush now, but we're very <laughs> proud of her. She's a director of finance in probably one of the fastest growing companies, um, startup companies in the UK. So just to say... <laughs> When we're talking about money, Christine's on a different level where her decimal point is somewhere across the road. When <laughs> her decimal point is not in the same location as ours. But we were going to ask Christine, as a director of finance, um, how would you give advice to somebody if, when they're looking to start making up or building a budget? Now, Corbin has already made reference to um, the tithe scenario, returning back to God, and then the free will offering. Give us some um, some gems in terms of how you would apply budgetary control in your role and then also in the household. Okay, cool. I mean, so to answer the question, I would I would kind of start with who needs a budget or who can get a budget? Um, and that's everyone, even if you're in school, in university, at work, retired, everyone needs a budget. A budget is just like simply just looking at how much money you have coming in and how much um, like money you have going out. Um, so with your budget, you wanna look at just anything, any kind of cash you get or income, whether it's pocket money, student loan, an income from work, pensions, anything you get, you need to list that down. And then also you need to make um, a list of all your like fixed expenses. So what, what a fixed expense is, is basically it's just something that um, whether it rains or it, it doesn't, you always have to pay, like, you know, you, whether it's your rent or your phone bill, that's a fixed expense. You, you need to make a list of that. And then from there, you also need to make, um, like, a provision for tithe as well. So for me personally, um, giving tithe is something that I, I take quite seriously because I am of the belief that if you give back to God, God will give back to you. Like, it doesn't matter if things yes, are tight that month, ETC. Yeah. Like, I, I just have to make sure, like, the tight money goes out, whether it's by direct debit or by check. Like, it just goes straight. Like, I don't have yeah. to think about it. And then if I need to top up, I'm looking to God, like, okay, cool. Can I please get, you know, like, you know, I need A, B, C, D, E. Um, so we have the income. We have the fixed expenses. We have the tithe. And then you got like some of your changing expenses or variable expenses where um, it can be anything from, you know, you take a holiday once a year or you have to buy gifts or you have to, you know, buy new clothes, ETC. So you make like a little provision for that. And then you also make like, you know, some, some, some target for how much you want to save um, mm. for the future, for a rainy day, for a house, for a car, for anything, a new bicycle, just whatever you want to you wanna save for you actually need to make a plan about how am I going to get there? And then um, the one thing I would say how to control it, you need to then look back after like three months or six months and say, okay, I said I'd save a hundred pounds a month. How am I doing against that, that plan or budget that I made? Um, so for me, that's, that's in, in simple terms, like how you'd make a budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Amen. So, I like the consistency that everyone's bringing through of, of the importance of tithe. Um, the fact that once that comes out, then we rely on God to do the rest. And that might be a foreign concept 
for any anyone that's listening who's maybe a visitor but we believe that you know we return to God a tenth of what we earn and God just sorts out all of the issues and I have many experiences of those times where you think things are really tight I'll pay my tithe and all of a sudden a check lands on the door from your mother or a friend asks you tells you to come somewhere and they pay for your meal or something like that God God's never short on blessings Mm, I just want to um, I just want to make reference to one of the things that pastor spoke about in the in the different plans, because I was quite surprised he made reference to the, the one boss plan. And I thought, does that really exist? Mm. Where, does that really exist these days where what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine? So people come in and they're not prepared to share. Um, what kind of encouragement could we offer to somebody who's... I think that's, that it, that's in of- mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what can we offer to somebody? Exactly, problem. What could we? What kind of encouragement could we offer to somebody who's faced that kind of circumstance where the the main breadwinner comes in and doesn't believe it's their duty to just share what they have? It's what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine. I think. I think. Um, may I speak? <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. I think that it's a mindset thing that you you have to kind of grasp quickly because I, mm. I've, I've probably witnessed it culturally um, and it, it does, <clears throat> again, create a division because the breadwinner has got no uh, interest in every, anything else apart from the fact that he should get everything that he's supposed to get because he's the breadwinner. Um, Mm. But the thing that they need to look at is that it's the whole package. You know, if you're if you're if you're the front runner, then who's looking at your back door? If you you know who who's looking after your children, who's doing all the important work? You know, there's Mm. important work both sides. So you need the the mindset has to change as quickly as possible. Otherwise, um, you know, there can be a lot of problems from from conflict. Okay. Excellent. Thanks. Um, can, I, can I just say, say something to that in, in like the, the different contexts as well? Because I know I know we speak a lot about the, you know, the husband and wife um, kind of situation. But I think even in in um, even like in, the, in a parent kind of uh, uh, child relationship um, and, and sibling kind of relationship, um, these things are really important as well. You know, mm-hmm. um, some yeah. of us have come up at a certain time where maybe you've got your first job. You're living at home. You get your first job. And you're like, yeah, you know, this is my money. Like I earn this money and you, you, you know, you decide, yeah. you, you, you know, you, you decide, right. I, I want to, I've been looking at those kicks. I want to get that. I want to get this, blah, 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 what have you. And um, I think that I would say to, to parents as well as young people in, in this, I think there's real wisdom in in young people contributing to household expenses in mm. contributing to um, uh, like, 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 giving a housekeeping kind of contribution um even if it's symbolic yeah Yeah. i think i think there's i think that because it's 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 very uh easy to um to continue on with 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 good habits once they're formed but it can be quite hard to break out of bad ones so you know i I just wanted to to add that in there for people who who are thinking about it you may be even young people you might be you you might you may be paying some you know uh putting some contribution towards in thinking but but you know you know I, i don't even make that much or what have you but trust me it will help you in the longer run to get into that habit yeah, and I've heard I've heard stories of where um, parents have taken money from children, and then when they leave home, there's a fat check or wad of money yeah. that's available for that child for them to 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 benefit from. And so there's there's definitely wisdom in that. Also, I'd like just like to raise that um, one of the points that pastors raise: we are called to be united in all areas as a family. So yeah. it's not just a case of being united in love. We should be mm-hmm. united in finance. We should be united in how we run the family pot. Pastor made reference to the fact that, you know, we shouldn't be making major financial decisions in isolation. We should be doing mm-hmm. that together as a family. Um, mm-hmm. I'll just give you all an opportunity to say something now, just in case I'm over talking. Yeah, on, I, I, would, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. I think... Um, 
it's, it's great training, all these things like what, what Carbon was just mentioning there um, and <clears throat> what we have been talking about so, thus far. It's about training. It's about practicing the correct thing. And if you can instill in your children as early as possible, a practical sense of um, sharing and um, having the right principles, then when they get older, okay, it will become natural. Mm. You know, so including them in everything, all the aspects of what you as parents are trying to achieve, mm-hmm. um, the setbacks, you know, um, you know, I, I, I have an example in my family when we moved into our current home, I brought, we brought all the family together, went through the process. And when we came here, we were able to praise and worship God together. Um, when we moved in Um, and it's a reference point that we can always go back to with our children to say Mm. God is good there you have an actual proof so I Mm. think it's it's something that I'll encourage us to do to get the children involved as soon as possible Um, and it's it's great grounding I think yeah and just in response to what you said there God wants us to recognize him as the ultimate provider and so what you're saying there is that you know if we allow God to lead and to teach our children that Amen. and our families that then we you know we can't go far wrong because they will understand that how important it is to rely on him amen yeah okay excellent um yeah. sorry Christine it seemed like you disappeared then but you flew back in yeah. from Zim <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah um before we close off then is there anything that anyone would like to share or they'd like to just add as their final takeaway nugget in relation to honey bunny where is the money because you know we spoke about the one boss plan the two boss plan where two people are doing things in isolation then the two partner plan where people have worked together and pastor said that the two partner two partner plan is the ult- is next to the ultimate while the senior partner plan where we involve God in that decision-making process is that's right open. that's yeah, right I, I would agree with that I would say that prove prove God first um when I became a Christian my my um my sort of conversation with God is show me mm. okay and yeah. he has done and he's continuing yeah. to do so so the Lord. boss plan is is number one it's not always going to be easy Mm. but it's right Mm. (laughs) all right amen so roger's saying senior partner plan it's not always going to be easy but just rely on god and he just fills in the gaps amen Amen. that's emphatic that's a wrap you're taking that away yeah there's nothing there's nothing to add yeah (laughs) so so with that we'll say thank you for listening i thank the panel for taking the time to join even christine just two hours ahead though so we don't feel too bad but <laughs> christine in zimbabwe okay. and we'll we'll uh, we'll invite people now to to tune into pastor's sermon of tonight which i believe is for married folk i won't say anymore okay okay amen okay <laughs> amen all right and for those and for those and for those looking to be married right? amen all right brother and sister round here it's because we're a family and these folks are so near when one 
has a heartache. We all share the tears and rejoice in this victory, in this family so near. I'm so Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tonight we are here. Again, I'm so proud of our panelists. Uh, I'm so proud of the prayer ministry's department. I'm very proud of, of our singers and musicians. Without them, this program will be useless. And uh, I, from the bottom of my heart, I do thank them immensely for the support that they have been giving to us thus far. I furthermore thank all of you who have been sending in your questions and remarks and which has been addressed by the panel. Oh, that's make it great. So all of us, we are in this game together. We are working together. I am very sure that at the end of the, of the series, we will say, yes, the Lord has been good. Those of you who are here, I want to throw a challenge to you. After the end of tonight's presentation, you will see that you have done your friends a disservice by you not inviting them to come to this series. You know, especially what we are going to discuss tonight, six things that every couple should know about sex. Wow! That would be wonderful. Yeah, if your husband is in the house, pull him near to you. If your wife is by you, pull him near to you. And uh, you're going to see how things are going to go. Bow down your heads and let us pray, dear Lord. Again, we do appreciate that you have given us the privilege, the chance of coming to you through diverse means. We thank you immensely for this series. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, for now, I kindly beg you that 
you put me aside. I beg you in Christ's name, because I am frail and weak. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, I am weak, but thou art strong. Use me as a vessel and speak to your people. Heavenly Father, I furthermore pray for each family represented here tonight. I beg you that they will know you the more. Uh, I beg you that families will be more united through this series. I pray, God, that you yourself would visit each family. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Six things that every couple should know about sex. In the beautiful garden of Eden, the first commandment that God gave to Adam and Eve was, Thou shalt have sex. Wow. It will surprise you to know that work was not the first job that God gave to Mr. and Mrs. Adam. If Adam and Eve were Ghanaians, we would call them Mr. Kofi, Adam, and Mrs. Eve, Ephia, Adam, because they were created on Friday. And I'm sure, and all of you are aware, that they were not created on Friday morning. They were created when the evening, the sun was setting. And the Lord God gave them this wonderful assignment, thou shalt have sex. You are going to ask me, Pastor, where did you get that from the Bible? That is why we are here to explore this wonderful text that God gave, wonderful assignment that God gave to Adam and Eve when Adam saw Mrs. Adam and he could not comport himself. He said, wow, this is the bone of my bone and this is the flesh of my flesh. And uh, when that happened, uh, what happened next? In Genesis, we read this important passage. Therefore, man shall leave his father and his mother, and they shall be joined. Are you understanding me here? They shall be joined together. They shall be joined to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Praise God. Those who have here, let them listen to what the Spirit of God is telling us this moment. So when God created Adam and Eve again, the first assignment that God gave to them was, thou shalt have sex. Okay? This was in the very beginning of time. And during that early beginning of time, a holy God, a perfect God, God who never sins, God who is holy, created this sexual experience for a holy couple living in a sinless world. Holy God, holy couple, sinless world, and God gave them sex. Hallelujah, praise God. And this was created by a holy God. Sex was created by holy God for a holy couple for, for to be celebrated in a place where there's no sin there and when God gave them this opportunity it was marvelous so the first fact is this God created sex and the sex was within marriage not only that God created sex God commanded Mr. and Mrs. Kofi Adam, 
Mr. and Mrs. Adam, that they should have this thing that you are talking of. God commanded them that they should have sex together. And it will surprise you that it is not only in the Old Testament. You will see that even in the New Testament, our Lord Jesus Christ, who traveled all the way from the Old Testament at creation, came over into the New Testament. And Je Jesus Christ, even though he never got married when he was here, endorsed it. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 You see, it is good that we are using the Bible to understand some of these philosophies. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 6, so then, they are no longer one, they are no longer two, but one flesh. And theologically, as soon as you say that a woman and a man have become one flesh, the only thing that binds them together physically, before the emotions and, and, and the other things will come in, is they being together in the bedroom. So when Jesus says that they are no, no longer one but one flesh, it has its implication to them. So, this thing was made by our Holy Father, blessed by our loving Savior. And I would like to submit to you, my dear brothers and sisters, that sex is not filthy. It is not. It is not, never filthy. In fact, it is not dirty. No way, it is not. I would like to submit to you that it's not common as well. It is, it is, it is not human. It's not filthy. It is holy. It is not dirty. It is clean. It is not common. It is sacred. It is not only human. It is also divine. Oh, I wish that when you go to the bedroom and you remember all these facts, and before you start your journey, you pray to God and say, ha, 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 Dear God, I thank you for giving me this beautiful wife, this beautiful lady. And I look at her shape, oh God, all that I can say is that praise God. And you are telling God, dear Lord, I am coming to enjoy the fruit of your labor. And the missus to say in her mind, oh God, I'm looking at this wonderful gentleman that you have given him to me. Oh God, I thank you that we are going to embrace ourselves physically, you know. Because it is divine. You need to, in all things, you need to thank God. Sister, brother, when you go to the bedroom, thank God. Thank God, thank God that he has given you that opportunity that you are about to enjoy. In that respect, because it is holy, when it is performed outside marriage, God forbids it. Outside marriage, God forbids the sexual union. Because in Eden, God created that for Mr. and Mrs. Adam. And the two of them became one. And the reason why God created them to be one is up to God. Therefore, please, you only tra traverse, you only, you, you only make it unclean, un un uh, un unholy, filthy, because you are not married to that lady, you are not married to that gentleman. Um, you shall not commit adultery. Please, remember that this thing, game that we are talking of is for wonderful people being coupled together in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, when the minister had said, I call upon this presence here present, and you say it after him. Call upon this presence here present to witness that I, Mr. XYZ, do take you, Miss, Miss XYZ, to be my lawful wedded wife, husband to have and to hold for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. You say, 
in sickness and in health, then you said till death do the part. Come on, straight after then you have been licensed. Therefore, God said, Thou shalt not drive without a licensed driving like a uh, plate. Don't drive without a driving license. God says that thou shalt not go there. You should not go there. Extra marital affairs have been forbidden by, forbidden by God in, in, in Genesis chapter 3. There's a variety of cases to which God said, thou shalt not. Recognizing that is for holy people holy convocation holy assembly people being married the lord god is says thou shalt not if you are not married god says premarital sex ladies and gentlemen those of you who are not married the bible today is telling you that premarital sex is not of god and the lord says hey hold it Thou shalt not concubinage. The Lord God says, Thou shalt not go that route. It is forbidden. Prostitution. God says, Thou shalt not go there. It is forbidden. Because Holy God. When he created Adam and Eve, he did not add all these silly things to the assignment that God gave to them. You see, God commanded them to have sex. However, God seriously abhor those who go into this relationship, extramarital affairs, premarital affairs, prostitutions, and, and concubinage, and, and the list will go on, and the list will go on. And homosexuality and lesbianism because you live in the United Kingdom I need to be very careful but all that I'm telling you is that you know you know what the Lord says about this kind of things here you know it is not coming from me but it's coming from God it is coming from God in this respect if you are living with someone whom you love and you are not married yet God wants you to do something you are living together of course the law of the land would allow you to do that but God today is asking me to remind you that you should get married it's better to get married in the nearest possible time than to stay together as people who are not coupled together by the word of God. The Lord says that please get married. If marriage is not possible and marriage is not desirable, I request you upon the word of God that you want to end this relationship and end this affair. The Lord is not pleased for you and for this gentleman and for this lady to be together in this relationship. Okay? Fact number three. Sex was created for the intimate bonding of married couple. It was created. You see, if you do talk of the theology, theology of sex, you know, when we go to heaven, we aren't going to get married anyway. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are so close, okay? They are very close. And when we go to heaven, you are aware that we are going to marry Christ. Hence, in heaven, no sex there. I remember there was this Sabbath school class for children and uh, the Sabbath school teacher was telling them that in heaven 
they will not be married, they will not be sex. And uh, one of the children says, then God should wait. God should not come. I need to get married and have sex like mom and daddy do before God comes. Anyway, that's just, just a sidetrack. <clears throat> the bottom of the line is that God, the three, the three Godhead, they are so united. Okay. And the closest that we can get to as human beings is to have sex together okay and when two people are bonded physically and their bodies are joined together praise god that is the highest experience that human being can have and that human being can draw nearer to heaven okay so this is a kind of bonding to create the ultimate intimate between the two of them it is in a sexual union that these two persons would become one flesh. Okay? So as soon as you are married to the person and you go to the bedroom together and you join your bodies together, you become so much so intimated and you can only reach that climax. You can only reach that state of unionship through sex. Okay, so God said that it's very important. No wonder that Solomon, <laughs> the naughtiest guy in the Bible, okay, who had, who had 700 wives and 300 concubines, 300 girlfriends, okay, says, and he was in the room with, with, with his wife, the Shunammite woman from Africa, okay, and go. Oh, out of me, the lady is saying this thing, okay? Let my beloved come to his garden. He is throwing the invitation to, to the husband. Darling, come and enjoy me. And when she says this, he responds to it. I have come to my garden. Wow. I believe that at this, at this late stage, Solomon was not wearing a suit. A three-piece suit. No, 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 no. He wasn't. So just understand where I'm coming from. Then Solomon says, I have come to my garden. My sister, my spouse. Look, 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 look at the weddings. I have come to my garden. My sister, my spouse. I've guarded my mirror with spices. Then afterwards, <laughs> he said, I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey praise god praise god praise god okay so sexual intimacy is the mutual obligation of both husband and wife it is an obligation you remember that i say initially that god commanded them to do it and now I'm saying again that it is an obligation for Mr. and Mrs. It is a mutual obligation for the two of them to have it. Okay? That is why in the preceding slide we saw the woman inviting Sir to come home. Inviting Solomon to come home. And Solomon literally came home. And when Solomon came home, he enjoyed himself. And when he enjoyed himself, let the husband therefore render to his wife the affection due and likewise also the wife to a husband the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband does and likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body but the wife does what does this mean it means that sir you are supposed to render unto your wife what she is due. In other words, when you go to the bedroom, okay, sir, you are responding, it is your responsibility that when you start your journey, you don't stop and root in the middle of nowhere and leave the woman panting and thinking and she will start counting the ceilings. Sir, the Bible is telling you, the Bible is commanding you that you should render to her the affection due her. It belongs to her. So take your time, take time to be holy. It's all right. 
take your time. You aren't going nowhere. She's not running away from you, sir. Do everything that, you see, because of PG, I need to restrain my language, but maybe there are some things that I cannot say here, and, and you have to use your own intuition to add to whatever that I would like to submit to you. And likewise, also the wife, you are, you are supposed to do the same to the husband, because lady, you don't have your own authority over your body, sir, you don't have your own authority over your body, okay? And... It is your responsibility, both of you, to try as much as possible to, to, to help them reach wherever that they are supposed to reach. It can be in your bathroom, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, in your wherever. Okay, because God commanded you to enjoy this life. Okay, in 1 Corinthians, we've been told that do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not attempt you because of your lack of self-control. Do not deprive one another except with a consent. Don't tell me that I am fasting for 10 weeks, I'm fasting for three months, therefore you are not allowed to visit me. My sister, the Lord has not given that mandate to you. The Lord has not told you to fast and pray without giving him the permission to come. The text says that that can only take place when it is the consent of both of you. The two of you need to agree to work on this thing here. So when one party says yes, and the other party says no, come on, 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 my sister, come on, my brother. As much as you want to be holy, you don't want to be holier than God. And God says that he's the one who commanded this, commanded this thing. Again, I am telling you here upon the word of God that this thing is not dirty. It is holy. And when you are doing holy things, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Watch a strong language. What we are saying here again is that my body does not belong to me. It is not my own. First, it belongs to God. And that is undeniable. And after it belonging to God, secondly, it belongs to my spouse. It belongs to my spouse. Therefore, in God's happy family, a spouse should make time to maintain the sexual relationship and experience sessions of intimacy. Okay. We need to create the avenue. We need to create the opportunity that, you see, you take your time, prepare yourself for this journey, and he too must prepare himself for this journey sex should be an important item on the agenda of the couple it is an important agenda that it should not be swept over you should not tell me that um, you're not going that route because he's been stubborn or she's been stubborn or you are punishing him you are punishing her that is far from the game Okay, what the Bible says is that it should be an, a very it should be a very important agenda in the family meeting. Well, let me tell you some statistics, and these things are very very important. In the early years of marriage, people long for sexual satisfaction. So those of you who are just marrying, please. Again, I'll tell you that, hey, make hair while the sun is shining. Okay, those of you who are very young, like, you know, I can mention my elder's name. Okay, and the thing, I'm telling you that uh, uh, you just got, I know that you've been married, but you are young, you are strong. The Bible is telling you, elder, make hay while the sun is shining. You see, when she gets to a monopause stage, she will decrease. In her sexual desire 
So get to a stage that she would biologically would not need it the more like previously. Okay? So when you are at a stage where you can do wonderful things, make hail while the sun is shining. And when the men too get to their midlife stages, they, they, they have less ability. Even though they have more desire for it. Even though they want to do it every now and then. Even though they want to enjoy it. And they will try to, you see, that they rush, 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 rush. And they end it all. <laughs> they get nowhere. And they become useless. Okay? That is biology. That's how their body has been programmed. So, so husbands midlife. When they get there, they have less ability, but they want it the more. So, madam, how are you going to encourage him, support him, when he has no, he has no power, but he needs his more? It is up to the two of you to arrange that you can reach satisfaction when you are at your monoposal stage, and he too is in his, he too is in his midlife stage. The two of you need to be mature enough and and think of how best that you can really enjoy yourselves. You see, when man advances in age, they are rejected. They are rejected. And now, at this stage, marital conflict step in. Okay? Sinful effort should prove that extramarital affair is even unnecessary at this stage, it is not. It is not, okay? Therefore, for you not to go to that stage, you need to start working. You remember the period when you were together and you were doing it every morning, every evening, whenever you were doing it, okay? Now you don't have the energy. Man, you want to go outside. Don't go. Stay home. As she is promising today through me that she will do everything possible. And marital sexual satisfaction would aid the fidelity of the home okay so these things are very 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 important I will submit that couples who are hearing me at this stage will take photo of this slide and the two of them will take their time and study it properly between the two of them and the two of them alone and see where they can improve and how they can improve their sexual life. In loneliness of mind, let each esteem the other more than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. In other words, where he is weak and he cannot perform much, madam, do everything within your limit to support him. Sir, when she cannot do much, take note of a biological clock, okay? And do everything possible within your limit to support her as well, to support her as well. Fact number five, sexual bonding of husband and wife illustrates the intimacy that should exist between Jesus and myself. I said it earlier, and I am saying it again, that sexual bonding of husband and wife illustrates the intimacy that should exist between my Jesus and myself. What do I mean by this? What I mean by this is simple. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 31 and 32, we are being told that for this reason, a man shall leave his father and a man shall leave his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and 
the church, Christ and the church. We are talking of when Madam and Mr., Mr. and Mrs. become one flesh. And, and Paul is saying, the word of Jesus Christ says that, I'm not only talking of physical attraction of Mr. and Mrs., I'm talking of, of, of spiritual attraction between Mr. And, uh, he and God. Okay, between man and God. As a husband uh, and a wife get close to each other, so Christ wants to be very close to me. No wonder Christ will stand at the door and knock. As the husband and wife want to get closer to each other, as they even advise to be very much intimated, so my Lord. My Savior too would like to be drawn closer to you. And our spouses become precious to one another. So Jesus, Jesus should become very precious to me. Very precious to me. And as the couple bonds intimately, so Christ and I should become bonded, not only temporary, but they should be bonded, bonded eternally. Always, all the way, Christ will lead you, lead you. Otherwise, you should be walking with Christ Jesus. All the time, you should be take, you should take Jesus as your personal friend. Every moment and now, the Mister and Missus, the center of the home should be nobody but the center of the home should be Christ Jesus. You know, privacy. We are looking at a place where God and I can be alone. You see, when. Mr. and Mrs. Re really would love to enjoy themselves very well. Even when the children are in the home, they are scared. They will say, oh, no, 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 no. The son is there. The son is not sleeping. The, the, the daughter is not sleeping. You want to be alone, okay? In the same hemisphere, when you want to be with Christ, you want a place where God and you can be alone. That there's nobody there to disturb you. But when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you pray, when you pray, go to your privacy. Don't let anybody know of your intent. Pray to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Tell him of all your burdens. And when you tell him of all your burdens, according to the word of God, our Heavenly Father, whom you spoke to privately, is going to reward you physically. You see? Again, take time. Like I said, when you are in the bedroom with your wife, man, take time. And I intentionally said, take time to be holy. So that with God too, you need to reserve time so that intimacy with him will not be rushed through. It should be peaceful. It should be enjoyable. It is not that, oh, just wake up, Lord, oh, I'm praying to you, you know, take care of me, and you rush through, through your prayers and you go, no. Take time to be holy. Take time and spend precious time with God. And that will be very peaceful. And that will be very much enjoyable with your Lord, the Master. Okay, and uh, again, you know the culture of Christ Jesus in the morning, rising up a great while before day, our Jesus would go out and departed into a solid, solitary place where there he prayed. You know, Jerusalem was a very noisy place in those days and people will be moving up and down the city throughout the day. And so Christ made it his custom, his culture, his way of life, that when there was no disturbances, Christ will find a way. So I'm, uh, what I'm trying to tell you here 
is that find time. If you can get the solitude, even in the afternoon, when there is nobody in the house. If you can get your own privacy, solitude, when nobody is there. Spend time with Jesus as you would love to spend time with your husband and as you would love to spend time with your, 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 your husband and your wife. And talk to Jesus Christ. Talk to Jesus Christ. Do you know that any husband and wife, any relations that there is no proper communication, they can't exist for life. Talk. In the time spent with Jesus, I should talk to him intimately. I should spend time with Christ Jesus. I should talk to Christ as my husband. I should talk to Jesus as my as my as my as my wife. I should it should be very private and I should open up, tell him all my needs, I will tell him all my wants, and I will cry upon him and I will love with him and he will walk with me in the garden when there will be deals on the roses and Christ will put his hand around me. And Christ will be my God. And Christ will be my friend. Because he and I, we do find very good time talking together and sharing communication together and pouring out my heart to him. You see, Psalm 68, verse, 62 verse 8 says that pour out your heart before him. Church, friends, at this moment, I am submitting to you in the name of Christ Jesus. But you should reach a stage where you can comfortably open up your heart, do a heart surgery, and tell God, Lord, this is me. Lord, this is my situation. Lord, here I am. With one plea, I come to you. I am just like this, Lord. I need this, Lord. Help this person, Lord. Do this and talk to Christ. Take that you are talking to Jesus over the phone. And I'm telling you that my Savior would respond to you. Take time and spend time to the Lord in your privacy. You see, according to a certain writer, prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Open out, out your heart to Jesus Christ as to a friend. And when you do, do that, listen. What God has to say to you. Because when you are talking to a friend and you open up to him and you communicate to him, the friend too will surely respond to you. And when Jesus Christ responds to you, surely sure, he is going to give you all that your heart desires. So far as he knows that, that can help you with your spiritual journey. So whatever the situation may be, take time to be holy and take time to spend to God and take time to listen to him. You say the Bibles for in them that you think that you have eternal life and these are the they which testify of me. These are they who testify of me. And the next point is meditate. Just imagine why you are only in the bedroom with your husband, with your wife, and you are in a sex mood, and he's whispering to you in your ears, and you are just listening. You close your eyes, and he enjoys enjoy. He telling you all those wonderful and beautiful words just imagine sir that you are in the bedroom and your wife too is talking to you and promising you all those wonderful things and you just close your eyes and just think of him and think of her in the same way i'm submitting to you that you need to meditate on jesus christ as i wait in silence in spiritual meditation, Christ reveals his ideas and plans, his solutions to my problems, and more importantly, his will 
to my life. And without Christ, I don't have any well. But Christ, when I take time and spend time with him and I meditate upon him, he will surely reveal to me my life. You see, my meditation of him shall be sweet, shall be wonderful, shall be great, shall be great. You see, and the next point that I would like to talk to you is that sexual intimacy illustrates the committed love that should exist between my Savior and me. My Savior and me, sexual intimacy should be equivalent to my relationship between myself and my God. Us, a husband and, and wife, communicate their love for one another. So Jesus and I communicate our love to each other. Commit our life to each other. Just imagine Christ on the cross for you. Just imagine Christ saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting life. Christ telling you that, yes, I gave my life to you. Christ saying that I died on the cross for you. Christ said I shared everything that I have for you. Just as your husband is promising you heaven and earth. Church, today Christ is saying that, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting life. Christ is telling you today, I I love you, Lord. You are saying to God, I love you, Lord, because he has heard my voice. The psalmist says to the Lord, I've heard your voice, my church. There's nothing in this world that you should do without the presence of God. And you should be willing to say that, Lord, I have heard you, Lord, and my Savior. The master today is welcoming you home. The master today is telling you that if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandment. Because I died on the cross for you. And when I threw the challenge to you, you made a promise that Christ Jesus, I have heard your voice have known how much you love me, then he is as well telling you that if you do know this, number one, keep my commandment. Have no other God before me. God is saying that make no graven images. Don't bow down like some churches do. Christ is telling you today, don't do that. Do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. God is telling you today that remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Says this you do all your work and the seventh day in the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you should do nothing you, your husband, your wife, your servant, your son, your daughter, all of you. Because it says there is God created the heaven and earth. Children, God is telling you today that honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the ground which the Lord your God has given to you. God is saying that, yeah, because you love me, you want to live longer in this world. God is saying that thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. And thou shalt not covet what belongs to your neighbor. God says, if you love me, I am inviting you that you will follow all this simple instruction. What is your reply? Are you able to say, my Jesus, I love thee. I know that thou art man, for thee all the follies of sin are resigned. Are you able to say that, my gracious, my redeemer, my savior are thou? Are you able, able to say that, if ever I love thee, my Jesus, it is now. Are you able to say that you are committing your whole life to the savior? He says, I love you because you first love me. Are you able to kneel down and tell this to Jesus Christ? And are you able to say that 
and pledges my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. And imagine when you cast your mind on the cross and you see how the Savior is suffering. Are you able to say that if ever I love thee, my, my Savior, my Jesus, it is now. Are you able to say that Christ is inviting you? Oh, to Jesus, I surrender all. You are saying that, Lord, the intimacy that I would love to have with my spouse, I would like to have a replica of that between you and myself. I will be able to say that Christ Jesus, I surrender all. I will be able to say that Christ, every known sin, I throw it all away. Everything that distracts me, prevents me from coming to you. Oh Lord, I surrender all. I will be able to say Christ Jesus, Take me, wash me, and cleanse me, and make me whole. Are you able to say that, oh Lord, everything disturbing me in my Christian journey. Now I come to you, I come to the cross, and say, Jesus, Savior, my Lord and my Master, I dip all under the cross, and I give all my life to you. As we are about to pray. As we're about to pray. I'd like to tell myself that King Jesus, Lord God Almighty, if there was a time that I was messing my life up, now I've remembered that I want to take you again as my Lord and my Savior. As much as I would love to be intimidated have serious intimacy with my, with my wife, with my children, with my, the rest of my family. I so much long for you because you died on the cross. Because I'm saying today that, Lord, I resign. Lord, everything that prevents me from coming to you, Lord, I'm saying that I bring it all, 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 Lord, all to you. Lord, all to you. Lord, all to you. I commit everything to you. Wash me. Cleanse me today. And make me whole today. Lord, wash me, my Lord, my Master. And I'm saying that, Lord, I do renew my vow to you. Rebaptize me. Rebaptize me. In the name of the Father, Lord, rebaptize me. Then I'm saying, Lord, if, you, if I've never had the privilege of being baptized, you have given us the, another opportunity. We give our life to you. We surrender everything to you. All to you, Jesus Christ. All to you, God, we resign. All to you, Lord. All to you, Savior, we resign. All to you. On the cross, on the cross we come. We come, dear Lord, we come. Jesus Christ, we come. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we come. Please, we beg you that you write our names in the book of life. The whole family want to be drawn closer to you. This is our plea. We ask you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow night. Please, no matter what you have to do, try to make it tomorrow night. The Lord has an appointment with you. I believe that God is going to watch you and make you clean. Jesus Christ, I beg you of this. In your name, have you requested amen again, amen. See you tomorrow. Give a hug to your family. Bye-bye.
Well 